The phenomenon of electricity has been known for thousands of years. The word itself comes from the Greek word for amber, electron. First used in English by the famous Elizabethan philosopher and scientist Francis Bacon. When a rod of amber is rubbed with fur, it can attract light objects like pieces of paper. You can experiment with this yourself on a dry day using a cloth and a comb. Further experimentation with different materials showed that the mysterious electric force was a fundamental aspect of nature. They also showed that there were two types of electricity called charges, which are now called positive represented by a plus and negative represented by a minus. If two materials are brought together with the same charge, they repel each other. And if they have unlike charges, they attract each other. In the 19th and 20th century, much more was discovered about the origin of the charges. It was found that all matter was made up of tiny particles called atoms. These in turn had a concentration of positive charge in the middle balanced by a negative charge in the cloud around this. These negative charges were called electrons. It turns out that the electrons carry the smallest possible electric charge. Electric charge is measured in coulombs. One coulomb is roughly the charge carried by 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons. The electricity we've just discussed is known as static electricity. This is because the charge does not move. It stays on the amber rod. Materials which allow this are called insulators. They don't allow charge to flow because the electrons in their atoms are bound closely to the center of the atoms and therefore they aren't free to move. On the other hand, conductors allow electricity to flow because the electrons are less strongly bound to the center and are free to move. You can see conductors and insulators in this quick sketch of the periodic table. This means you can charge up an insulator, but not a conductor because the charge will flow away.